can last because I don't want to follow that. <laughs> but, uh, but as the pastor, you get credit for everything that happens in the church, right? So I'll take credit for that. That was awesome, wasn't that? If you can give one more hand, um, I mean, our background, if you're not here, usually it, you wouldn't know, but it's changed, and it looks very simple, but that doesn't mean it was simple to put together, um, and there's a lot of people involved in that, so if you could give a hand to those people. And uh, part of the reason we went unplugged tonight was for the neighbors um, to kind of keep it down, but we should have just plugged in, because that last song totally blew that, right? Um, but part of it was that, but also part of, to be in the spirit of Christmas. I mean, um, we get so commercial, we get so caught up in the things that we want to simplify it and keep it simple. And also in the spirit of Christmas, I'm gonna give you a present in just a second, and then you're gonna give me one, okay? So the present I'm gonna give you is I'm gonna go shorter than usual. That's your present. That's your present. See, I've, I've got you trained well. Okay, so here's how it goes. I'll tell you I'm going to be shorter than usual, and you're going to go, aw. So going shorter is my present to you. The awe that you give is your present to me. Ready? I'm going to go shorter than usual tonight. Aww. Okay, good job. Now, the only problem is I'm not sure I can keep my present, but let, let's try. Let's try. We'll try. So think about this. I want you to think about what was the best Christmas present you ever got. Think about that. Does something come to mind? Well, it might have been this, because this is one of mine now. Do you know what that is? Picture? No, I didn't give you a picture? Oh, it took a while. Sorry, that's my fault. So I'll tell you what it is, although I know all of you know what this is. That's... <laughs> That's Big Jim and his pack, which uh, is kind of like a, it's a replacement for G.I. Joe, right? One, Hasbro had G.I. Joe, Mattel had Big Jim. So one Christmas, I got the whole group. Um, so that was one of the best presents I ever got. Now, if I had kept that in the package and never opened it, I could retire right now selling it. But I wasn't insane. I wanted to play with it. I, I wasn't saving it for 40 years later to make money. Now, is Christmas really about getting and giving presents? Yes, it is. It's all about that. It is totally about giving and getting presents because Christmas began with somebody giving a present, a present so audaciously, so incredibly generous that thereafter, the response has been to give presents in honor of that first Christmas. So yes, Christmas is definitely all about giving and getting presents. The problem is that we've forgotten about that first present. We've forgotten what it is. So tonight, I want to see if we can remember. Now, we're going to read in the book of John, so let me just tell you that in the Bible there's four accounts of Jesus' life while he was here on earth. And Matthew, who was a follower of Jesus, wrote one, and Luke, who knew people who followed Jesus, he wrote another. And both Matthew and Luke talk about the details of Jesus' birth. But John, the book we're going to read tonight, doesn't give the details, but he gives the reason why. He gives an explanation of why Jesus came. So we're going to be in the book of John, Chapter 1, verse 1, and it says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, 
yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now that's a long passage. That passage is kind of like a fruitcake because it's got a lot of stuff in it and it's really dense. It's got way more stuff than we can go through tonight. So we're just going to look at two verses from those 14 and see if we can't understand Christmas better. So four and five, verses four and five say, in him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So in those two passages are two very simple ideas. One is this, that the world is filled with darkness. Now really, is it really? Now sometimes bad stuff has happened to you at some point in your life, hasn't it? I know it has, but sometimes we feel like we're the only one that stuff happens to. We're the only one that has to deal with this. But if you talk to people If you get to know them good enough that they tell you their story, you know that everybody in the world has experienced the darkness of the world. Maybe to different degrees, but everybody has experienced the darkness of the world. Now, let's look at Jesus' experience when he came into the world, when he was born. So Matthew and Mark, I told you, give the details of Jesus' birth. Well, they say that his parents were from a town called Nazareth, and Mary got pregnant supernaturally by the Holy Spirit. And while she was very pregnant, on the verge of giving birth, a decree went out, a government decree, that they had to travel to their hometown, their original town, to register. And so Mary, very pregnant, had to go with her husband, travel by donkey, long, long distance, to go to this town, a tiny little town, Bethlehem, where all these people are pouring into that don't normally live there. And when they get there at night, there's no place. They go to the hotel, they go to the inn, but there's no place for them. They end up sleeping in the barn. So there was, they were essentially homeless. And then shortly after that happened, uh, the king of their country issued a decree. He heard about that a king was born, and he was afraid. And so he found out that it could have been Jesus, and he was born in Bethlehem. So he ordered all the babies in Bethlehem killed. So the government, they had to flee for their lives. The government killed their own people. The government did that, and Jesus had to flee for his life. He was a refugee, and he was born in the Middle East. Now, that kind of stuff doesn't happen today, right? Right? If we know anything about what's happening in the Middle East, that same stuff is happening right now. What happened to Jesus is happening today. The world is still a dark place. There is darkness in the world. Now, that's not a very cheerful Christmas message, is it? (laughs) Well, it's not the end of the message yet, right? Now, God is a realist. God, God is not an elected office. To be God, you don't get elected. He doesn't have to run for re-election. He doesn't have to convince anybody to vote for him. He can say whatever he wants and not lose about Uh, be worried about losing his job. And so he tells the truth, and he's giving us a picture of the world as it is, and thank God he does, because we need to deal with the world as it is, and God talks to us about the world as it is. Amen? So the first thing we need to see, it's a dark world we live in. There is good things, yes, but there's a lot of darkness too. But the second thing we need to see is that God gave a gift. And it says that this world is dark, but God gave the gift of light. God gave Jesus. Jesus is God's gift to us, and Jesus is the light of the world. And so there's three things we want to look at very briefly, remember briefly, tonight, about light, about Jesus coming into the world. And the first thing is this, is God's Christmas gift. Jesus, he illumines. I know that's a fancy word, but it just means that he reveals that he makes clear, he helps us to see. If you go into a dark room at night, what do you do? You turn on the light and you can see what's there. And that's what Jesus does for us. One of the most important things he does is he helps us to see him. 
Now, I know, I've learned this about myself. I'm in danger of going to a bad place whenever I want to tell people about the things I've done or the things I've accomplished. If I feel it's important to let you know I did this, this, and this, when I want to brag, in other words. Now, um, let me ask you this. If, when you travel, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to a first world country that has clean hotels and clean toilets and clean towels? Or do you want to go to a third world country where your life is in danger? Where would you rather go? Well, I know where you'd rather go. We'd rather go to the first world country and the four and five stars hotels. Well, Jesus was in heaven. He lived there and he came down to the third world country. He stayed in a rat infested hotel, so to speak. Why did he do that? Because that's where we are. He left the light of heaven to come down to the darkness because that's where we are. And he wanted to be with us. Jesus came where we are because he loves us. That reveals what God is like. God could have stayed up there and he could have nothing to do with us, but he cares about us. So he came to where we are and he came into the circumstances we are. He didn't pretend to be human. He became human. He became like us. He knew what it was like to, to be poor. He knew what it was like to have to run for his life. He knew sorrow, he knew grief, for real, just like we know it for real. We learn about God, he reveals himself to us so we can see what kind of God he is. The second thing that, that uh, God's Christmas gift do, his gift does is it gives life. Now dinosaurs walked the earth, we know that. Do you know why they died out? Well, the theory, there was many theories, but what they think, and it's almost certainly what happens, that a giant asteroid came and whammed into there, boom, somewhere in Mexico. And the result of that giant asteroid whacking into the earth was a huge cone of dust and debris that rose into the atmosphere and stayed there for years at a time, and it blocked the sun. And these were reptiles, they're cold-blooded animals. They couldn't live in those cooler temperatures. And that was the end of the dinosaurs. Um, and, uh, you know, it, I, I just learned this, too. I don't know if this is true, but Jupiter, you know, Jupiter, that giant planet, one of the reasons it's there is that a lot of asteroids hit it, asteroids that would probably hit Earth um, if it wasn't there. And that's really a detour, but there's a nerd or two in this crowd that would be happy to hear that. So let's get back on track, get back on the road, okay? Dinosaurs died from a lack of life, uh, light, because light gives life, right? Where does life come from? Life always comes from living things. No dead thing ever gave birth to anything else. Life always comes from life. Now, we can't live without the sun. We can't, S-U-N. But the truth is we can't live without the sun, S-O-N either, because in him is life. It tells us in verse four, in him was life but it's a different kind of life. It's a spiritual life. It's a life we're not born with. But he, and we don't have it, but he wants to give it to us. He wants to give it away. And the third thing we see about this God's Christmas gift, this light, is that it's beautiful. Now there are some crazy people in this world, crazy people in this room, that will get up early in the morning when it's still dark, and they don't have to. They get up because they want to. To what? To go see the sunrise on the beach. Anybody here ever done that? See, you guys are crazy. You don't need to do that. You do it because you want to. Why? Because it's beautiful. It's just a beautiful thing to see. Right? Now, how, I don't, how do you decorate for Christmas? Typically, what do people do? They put up lights. They are beautiful, aren't they? Now, when I was a kid, and we had six kids, and so our house could be a little bit crazy at times, and during Christmas time, sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night for whatever reason, and I would go downstairs, and I would plug in the Christmas tree, and I would just sit there and look at the lights, just because I thought it was a beautiful thing. You never knew that, did you, Mom? <laughs> See, uh, there's other things you don't know either, but I'm not... <laughs> This is not a confession right now. Just... They're beautiful, aren't they? Light is a beautiful thing. Now, um, 
that's one thing, like atheists, they, can, they want to explain life as a totally, a totally scientific thing, as a, right, that everything has a, a, a purpose. What purpose does beauty serve? What purpose does it to life sustain? It gives life value, it adds to life, but what does it have to do with sustaining life? Beauty is, is evidence of God, and, and if you, you know, I'm sure you've probably heard of Handel's Messiah, you've heard of it, right? And there's that one part, the hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You all have heard that, right? Well, he wrote it, he wrote it, it's about, about Jesus. And as he was writing it, his servant would come and bring him food. He wrote it, it's really long and, and a, a beautiful piece of music, but he wrote it in a very short amount of time. And this, he didn't even get up to eat. His servant would bring him food and he said that he'd be crying, writing this. And he said he felt like he'd seen God. And the first time they played that song, it was a benefit about 300 years ago. It was for poor people. And the money they raised got 142 people, men, out of debtor's prison. Isn't that, that God, a, a song about Jesus would set people free from their debt. This song that, that Handel wrote, it's a beautiful thing. Where does this beauty come from? It's, it, it's evidence of God, it's truth of God. Now let's make this very personal because all this means nothing unless we can apply it to ourselves. So I told you that the world is a dark place. And I told you that people still have to flee for their lives, that there's people poor, right? people suffering. But those are symptoms of the problem. They're not the problem itself. If you have a fever, if you're vomiting, those are symptoms of the problem. They're not the problem. And the, the darkness, we are the problem. We are the problem. We have the darkness, not the world, us, we. We have darkness in us. And, in John chapter three, it says this, Jesus is talking, it says, the light has come into the world and the people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. The darkness is with you and I. That's the thing that Jesus has to cure. Now this is easy to see in some people, right? Hitler clearly was dark, but what about us? Is it really, are we really dark people? Well, let me ask you this. See, people, one kind of darkness is people who have and are comfortable don't think about the people who don't have, right? I got mine, I'm good. I got the stuff I need. Why should I think about the people who don't have? That's a form of darkness. So let me ask you this, and ask me this question too. This Christmas, did we think more about giving to people who don't have, or did we think more about this is what I would like to have? This is what I hope I get. This is the hint I'm gonna give, so I get what I want. Which did we think more of? And I'm just as guilty as you are, so, but that's a kind of darkness that those who have neglect or don't think about those who don't. So we are the darkness, and God's gift is not to the world, it's to us. So God's gift of Jesus, it doesn't illumine the world. It's supposed to illumine me. It's supposed to help me make sense of the world. It's supposed to help me see myself as I am. I tend to overlook, this is our, our tendency as people, we, we um, elevate or make worse, magnify other people's faults and we downplay or minimize our own. And we're supposed to do the opposite. We're supposed to be gracious and kind to other people and hard on ourselves because we're naturally the opposite. But we don't do that. We're easy on ourselves and we're hard on other people. That's a form of darkness in the world. What if it was flipped around? What kind of world would this be? It's not just supposed to illumine me. It's supposed to grow in me. It's supposed to give me life. I am supposed to be like where I go, there's supposed to be life. God wants to transform me. Instead of a life taker that sucks from other people, I'm a life giver. When I step into a room, when you step into a room, life is supposed to come into that room because God is transforming us. He's given us the gift of his son. He's giving us new life. That, that gift of light that he wants to get is supposed to become beautiful in me. I'm supposed to become beautiful. I am beautiful, aren't I? The most beautiful woman is my wife, of course, of course, is, is a virtuous woman. 
And I'm sure that's probably true of men too. Isn't the most attractive man, the most attractive woman, a virtuous one? Despite their beauty, I've seen, I have known physically beautiful women that, quite honestly, I would not want to be married to because of their personality. Um, beauty is, is within, it starts within. God wants to make us into beautiful people because he wants to live within us. Now, here's the scary part. See, he wants to make us beautiful because he wants to make us good. I'm not sure how good I want to be. I'm not sure I want to be that good. And it's kind of a silly fear because I've never had the problem of being too good. You know what I'm saying? I've never had the problem. Well, I'm just too good, man. It's, I'm suffering for it. I don't know what that's like. I don't know what it's like to be too good, but God wants to make me good. Why, why should that be a scary thing? Part of it is I like some bad things. I, I like things, and I'm a pastor, right? So, I, and let me just be clear, and you know it, right? I'm not perfect. I'm not involved, when I say I like dark things, I'm not you know, involved in embezzling or, or a, you know, prostitution ring, anything like that. I don't want to give you the wrong impression. But there's parts of me that are attracted to things that are wrong, that I should not be attracted to, and I am. And I'm not totally certain I want those things to go. God wants them to go. What would that be like? What would it be like to, for God to get complete control of me and purify me, and I become like him? What would it be like to be good? I don't know. But we shouldn't be afraid of it. We should accept that it's probably a really good thing. It's probably awesome. Well, let's find out. Why don't we find out? God has given us a gift. He's given us the gift of his son. All we have to do, it, you know what he says to get that gift? Anyone who believes in him, who believes. Now, some of us may find it hard to believe, but you know what, you can decide to believe. It's a decision. You can say, I got problems with this, this, and this. I don't understand it. That's okay. You can still choose to believe. You can say, I, I'm just gonna believe. The answers will come later. If we got all the answers, I would really doubt we were dealing with God. God knows way more than we do. He couldn't give us the answers even though we want them. We can receive right now the light that God gave us that first Christmas. And it would, see we've tasted good things, haven't we? But we, if we haven't tasted God, it's kinda like ice cream is way better than a picture of ice cream, isn't it? Wouldn't you rather have real ice cream than a picture of ice cream? Mmm, ice cream. We all would. Those good things that we taste are a picture of God. They're not God himself. God is way, way better than any good thing we've tasted here on earth. Those are just a picture of who he is. To know him, to experience him, is way, way better than anything there is. Amen? Amen. Kenneth, where is Kenneth? So what? Did I, did I finish quick? You're not even paying attention, are you? He's back there talking story, that guy. <laughs> Repent, repent, <laughs> repent. Just say yes, how's that, did I? Three more, okay, three minutes is shorter than usual. Let's pray, bow your heads please. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy to us and the gift that you've given to us and uh, help us, Father, to receive it. It, it doesn't really mean anything unless it, it comes to live unless you come and dwell within us. So the gift is available and we receive it by believing, Father. And you wanna, in the process, make us good. Let, help us to find out what that's like, Father. What it means to be good. What is it like to be good? I pray that each one of us could experience that, Father, and, and it would become the source of our giving that we would learn to give just like you. Father, for all this, we thank and praise you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.